Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back to Red River Living. Guys, it's kind of a bittersweet day today. We've been raising our meat chickens here for about the last seven and a half weeks. As you can see back here in my background right here, I've got my little chicks back here. Uh, these here are now about three weeks old. And this morning we're fixing to feed those. And once we get these moved and fed, then we're gonna move over here. And as you look into this pen, you can see my chicks that are about, have become chickens and they're about eight weeks old now. These are Cornish crosses and this is processing day for us. So yesterday, I took the feed off the big chickens. Um, we took it off probably about noon yesterday. And here, I'm filling up my feeders this morning. Um, I'll, with these little chicks, they'll go probably almost two days on these two things of feed right here. Now the big chicks, I was basically going through about 25 pounds of feed a day toward the end of this feeding process. So, um, the, what I did learn from this is the watering of this. Uh, the, and it could be because of their Texas heat, but the chicks have really gone through more water than um, I thought they would. A five gallon bucket doesn't suffice for that here right now. Um, we're probably having to fill them up two, almost three times a day on water. So you just gotta be really aware of your water situation. Five gallons seems like a lot of water, but when you got 50 chickens in a pen, you just really gotta stay on top of your water. So normally what we do is I fill it up in the morning, Debbie comes home from work at lunch, she checks on it. Then that afternoon when I come home, I check on it again and fill it up at that time. Um, I just think it's real important to make sure they got water. Um, if you run short on feed, that's one thing, but water, water they gotta have. So just be aware of that. Um, it's almost, you know, it's kind of a process, but you know, it's one of the things that has to be done every day. Hey, this is not a, this is a chore. It's gotta be done, so. That's all of them. So we got the dip net out. <laughs> I don't think that's been on camera before. Nobody has showed how to get them out of the chicken tractors. They've showed how to move them. But yet on video, have I seen how they catch them out of the tractor? So <laughs> let's just say that was entertaining, folks. <laughs> but we did. <laughs> we went and got the dip net. So what we're doing right here is I, I moved and I moved them over and put them actually here beside us in the dog kennel. One of the things I do know already is um, a lot of our chickens are going to be smaller than they were last time we did this. These are 
They're younger. Now I've got a couple of pretty good size ones, but a lot of them are a lot younger. Which gonna make for a good eating chicken, but quote somebody tell you we're not gonna quite get the yield out of them. <laughs> well guys we've gotten all of our chickens moved this morning and it's one of the things trying to get early start as early as possible and still running behind a little bit i was hoping we'd be we got this done about six o'clock this morning but it's almost seven now uh ch catching the chickens in the coop that was quite the ordeal but anyway we've got them all moved up here i don't have to make another trip to the pasture now so that was kind of my thought process for what I was doing here. So the next stage here is we're going to start taking them out of the pen and we're going to start processing them and getting them from here um, through the next couple stages here, guys. Right now we've got them in their cones. Um, I'm, ble I'm bleeding them out right now. And... Um, you know, from everything I've watched, this is, hey, the most humane way to do this. You know, we're not wringing their neck and people talk about how grandma used to do it and all that. Um, at this point, their nerves are just twitching on them. So here, we're dropping them down in our 150 degree water temp. And what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to kind of watch my thermometer right here and keep up with that. And I'm just going to move them around inside this water. And as I pick one up in a minute, I'm going to reach down and pull the skin on his toe. And when that starts popping off, you know that it's time to go to the plucker at that point. Pop that skin off the end of that toe, so that chicken's ready to come out. I'm just getting the birds out and I'm just gonna any of the feathers that were missed and finish kind of cleaning them off and then dad's gonna get over here and actually
these are the what they call hey the for lack of better words the killing cones anyway i'm taking them out of the cones right here and we're moving them over here to the water and this is where we're putting them in the water the water's about hey 140 145 and then from the water bath here they'll go into the plucker and guys i'm going to tell you i've heard it already in the videos talking about if you're doing one or two that's one thing but the plucker is a lifesaver. It's money been well, well spent right here already for just what we've done so far. It is making a mess, and I kind of knew it was going to make a mess here. That's why we put the pallets down, and we were just going to rake this up. We're trying to keep that on the concrete to keep the mess down a little bit. But it is making a mess, but it was a mess that I kind of anticipated it was going to make. The pallets was to get us out of the mud and wearing the grass out. So here they're coming out of the cone and they're going into this. I put some Dawn soap in this. The Dawn soaps to help break down that friction and um, let that water get to the feathers a little bit better. Well, we're down to the last two, guys. Um, we're standing around talking, and everybody's consensus is the fact that the plucker has paid for itself today, and the fact that we're not um, having to pluck these chickens. And guys, as always, anything that you do, equipment's everything. So um, don't skimp on the plucker. If you're going to do more than two or three chickens, you need a plucker. As always, thank y'all for watching. Please like and subscribe to Red River Living if you enjoyed this video.